Stephen's on set. Must be time for the business then. Um, we're going to stay with that British election, in fact, we were just talking about. You're looking at one big, big issue in Scotland and the business world as well. Yeah, that's right. And that's the issue of falling oil prices. The price of a barrel of oil is about half of what it was this time last year. And that's given many countries a boost to their economy as the cost of petrol falls. But in Scotland, thousands of workers have been laid off and others are facing pay cuts. Now, Aberdeen in the north of the country is the UK's hub of oil, the oil industry, our correspondents Lucy Fielder and Irvay Emerick have been there to find out how people have been affected. Over the last year, the downturn in the oil industry has dealt a blow to Scotland's economy, particularly here on Aberdeen's harbour. These ships run supplies to oil rigs in the North Sea. Contractors have seen a sharp drop in business. There's fewer vessels working at Aberdeen now. Or if there are vessels here, they don't have jobs to go on, so that has affected us. This shipping company remains busy supplying the Scottish islands, but its energy clients are cutting costs. The oil and gas industry has laid off 4,000 employees within the last year. It's very nervous. Eh? People are getting laid off and paid off every week in different companies. The sector is the UK's largest industrial investor, employing almost half a million people. This basin has some challenges, both in terms of rising cost and now decreasing production, on top of which we've got a crisis globally with the oil price. For the best part of three decades, Frank Doran has represented energy workers as a union official and member of parliament. He's retiring at a challenging time for Scottish oil. The trade unions are having a problem at the moment because the management want to change things there. Instead of a, th a, th a two week on, three weeks off cycle, uh, for example, the, the, the employers now want uh, for no extra money um, to change that into a three weeks on, three weeks off. What oil and gas companies want from the next UK government is fiscal encouragement to keep drilling and exploring off Scotland's shores. Our team there in the UK. Now, deal or no deal is the question for you. We must be talking about Greece and its debts again. And the answer is no deal for now, at least if you're listening to the Greeks. That's a, they say there won't be a deal unless their international lenders compromise on some of the demands they're making about economic reforms. Greece's finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, was in Paris and Brussels on Tuesday in an effort to win support for his government's position in the negotiations. Greece is trying to unlock the last 7.2 billion euros of its bailout loans. It's quickly running out of cash though and is due to pay more than 750 million euros to the International Monetary Fund next week. The payment that was due uh, in the past couple of days though has been made. We have conf confirmation of that from the IMF today. Mr Varoufakis saying he doesn't expect any agreement though at Monday's meeting of Eurozone finance ministers. Markets time then Stephen, what's happening? Uh, well we've got shares opening generally down in Europe. It's a pretty start, flat start in general though. We're of course keeping an eye on what's happening on London's FTSE 100 ahead of the elections tomorrow. You can see it's opened up just ever so slightly at 0.07%. HSBC is an interesting company to watch with the elections in Britain. They've threatened to move their headquarters away from London because of the bank levy, of course a very uh, political issue as well. Uh, their share is trading up 0.9% ahead of that vote tomorrow. We'll move on next with a look at some of the day's other business stories. And the shares in the French bank, Société Générale, have opened down 4% in Paris. That's despite the lender reporting a net profit that's five times higher than the first three months of last year. The €868 million Euro figure is despite the losses that Société Générale saw of €90 million Euros at its Russian operations. The French engineering company Alstom says it's registered a record 10 billion euros worth of new orders in the year to the end of March. That's up 60% on last year. Alstom's in the middle of selling its electricity turbines business to GE, a 12.3 billion euro deal that the company says should be finalised in the coming months. Its shares are opened up 1% here in Paris. And Frozen has kept the heat on Disney's earnings yet again. Sales of merchandise connected to the film were 10 times higher in the first quarter of 2015 when compared to last year. Profits overall at Walt Disney rose by 10% over the period to $2.1 billion.
10 times higher is incredible. One incredible figure to some more incredible figures. Um, new figures on salaries at Apple throwing up some very interesting results. Yeah, and this is all to do with one particular person at Apple, and her name is Angela Arendt. Now, according to Bloomberg, she was paid nearly $83 million last year. That's nearly 10 million more than we thought uh, in previous official documents. Now, she's in charge of operating and expanding Apple's online and physical stores. She was the chief executive of the British luxury brand Burberry before, where she was the highest paid CEO of publicly traded British companies. Uh, but what's interesting about this is that since she's moved to Apple, compared to Tim Cook, the chief executive, he gets paid 9.2 million and she gets nearly wow. 83. Now, uh, she, the reason that Apple says that she's paid so much is partly because she was paid so much in her previous job mm. uh, and there's also a signing bonus involved in her moving to Apple last mm -hmm. year uh, and of course they say it, that's coupled with her experience and extraordinary ability is why they're paying her so much. Okay, I wonder if she's worth it. I must admit, I wish that would happen to me. You know, that <laughs> they would suddenly pay me 10 million more than was that previously happens, let us disclosed. Know, I yeah. <laughs> if that happens, you'll know because I won't be here, Stephen. <laughs> I love it, really. Stephen, <laughs> this is all for us, Tony